Hello and welcome back to KTech Designs. My name is Seth. In this tutorial, I will show you how I made this everyday carry or EDC pry bar in FreeCAD. There isn't really any history to why I made this model. Um, I previously made a everyday carry model for someone as a fiber gig and I thought that the tool was kind of neat and maybe it'd be fun to make one in FreeCAD. So without further ado, let's get into the model. So as always, I start from the start page. Let's create a new model. Let's go to the part design and create a new body. Uh, create a sketch and we're gonna sketch on the XY plane. So now we're gonna make the top view profile of the part. If you notice that there's a little angle in the part, um, I haven't really seen a lot of uh, pry bars with a, an angle on them, but I thought that would make it a little more ergonomic um, if it was actually going to be made and used. So let's go ahead and model that. Start with this line here. Actually, we need to move this back. Connect to that vertical axis. Make sure I have the right constraint. Uh, let's get the polyline going. Angle out here. And we'll get all of our constraints uh, added in a minute. And I'll connect it like that. So one thing I like to do when I'm sketching out parts is not to worry about exact placement. Just get the overall shape. And then let the constraints and the dimensions uh, bring it into shape. So actually this one we want for reference. Actually, let's make this, we'll use this as our datum for the bottom instead of making it a symmetric part. Um, I definitely want these um, orthogonal and those as well. I could have done a parallel between these two, but uh, I decided I wanted it that way. Uh, a lot of these dimensions are going to be in English units, but I'm going to plug them in as millimeters anyway. So we're going to get some funky decimals here. Uh, let's add this sketch fillet. There it is. Constraint preserving. Do that one. And that one. Hit escape. Grab those two, and those should be equal. Okay, and then that dimension. Oh, by the way, I am using FreeCAD version 0.2. Um, I haven't used it for very long, so I'm not entirely sure what the differences are between that and the last staple version, 0.19. Um, but if I find anything that's noteworthy, I'll, I'll be sure to let you know. Alright, so this should be 50.8. Let's also take this point and this point and dimension that, 50.8. Let's take this leg and dimension that to 15.88. Okay. Actually, let's take this and that and make those coincident. Oh, okay. So actually, this coincident mate needs to go away. Or constraint, rather. And this one and this one should be merged. Uh, now let's take this leg. We'll go ahead and dimension to the axis this time. 76.70, 6.2 millimeters. And I apologize for my uh, low voice. I kind of lost my voice a while back. This is not <laughs> my regular voice. I think we need to make these two equal. Right. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let us add this uh, dimension here, this angular dimension of 15 degrees. That should be pretty much locked in. Oh, I see. Oh, sorry. Lost my equal constraint. I thought I still had that on there. All right, so that's locked in. Uh, but now I want to add uh, a round feature on the back side there, and that radius is one inch, so 25.4. Okay, 
Perfect. Close that. Let's pad it. And I think I did a quarter inch, so 6.35 millimeters. Now I'm going to do some work off of this face, or rather I'm going to make a tangent, a, t a datum plane, um, on that surface uh, so that I can uh, make my cuts and such. But I don't actually want to work off of that face, knowing how FreeCAD struggles with that. So we're going to make a datum plane. Here's the datum plane feature. And the way we're going to do this is 15 degrees off of the uh, ZX plane, or XZ plane. That should be my reference. Let's maybe mo grab it from the model tree. Okay. And I want about the uh, Z axis, I guess, 15. No, that's not right. All right, I'm not sure how that happened. I'm using the exact same method I used last time. So let's just do this again. I'm going to grab the XD plane to start with, make a datum. OK, that worked better. And then we want to increase. Yes, that's what I want. Increase that to 15. Click OK. OK, so I probably could have done a chamfer uh, on this edge that I'm about to cut. But oops. sometimes it's easier to control a chamfer with a triangular sketch. Uh, in this case, that is what I'm going to do. So let's grab this corner here. That should be fine. It won't break as much as the face moving. And then let's draw our triangle. Okay, that looks good. So I want these two to be at an angle of 14 degrees. And I actually want to dimension from that axis to the bottom 2.032 millimeters. Okay, close that. And let's do a pocket. And we'll just say uh, through all. All right, space bar to hide that. Next, we want to create a chamfer on this leg. Uh, the reason why I did that is um, I didn't want this entire surface to be a low chamfer. You know, it's a pry bar. You do need to have a, a thin area to pry up with. Um, but I didn't want the entire edge to be thin, so I just made this picking corner, let's say, of the thin feature. And of course, I picked this corner because, you know, if you're... Well, I'm right-handed, so if you're right-handed, you're holding the uh, the tool in this direction, and this is a natural edge to pick from. So let's go ahead and pick that edge. Pick chamfer. And I want to change this type to a distance plus an angle. And the size is 6.35. And I want the angle to be pretty shallow, so let's pick 12. Um, I think I need to actually flip that. There we go. So that way we can have a nice sharp starting area, but not so thin that it would fail uh, with repeated use or even a one-time use, depending on what you're trying to pry. Uh, so that's good. Let's click OK. OK, so the next feature that I want to make is the uh, bottle opener. And I'm going to put it uh, on this side. Um, let's make a new sketch, put it on the XY plane. I'm just going to close that out and we're going to change the attachment, uh, position and it's, uh, the thickness of the part, which is 6.35. Click OK. I'll go back in to edit that sketch. Uh, this is also convenient to do that placement change right away. Uh, so that I can actually see the sketch while I'm drawing it, instead of it being hidden behind the body. Okay, so with this part, with the sketch open, let's draw a polyline. And we're going to make it like that. And we want an arc. 
about like that. I'll just grab these two and press T for tangent on those. Um, I think I'm going to actually grab this corner here so that I can make these two horizontal. Uh, yep, that looks good. And um, I guess those don't have to be parallel, so we'll leave that as is. All right, let's start with some dimensions. So this distance is 34.925. We'll leave that. I will let the geometry determine what that is. Oh, uh, let's grab a point there. Make those vertical. And then we'll dimension this to 7.9375. This arc radius is 4.7625. Get back over there. Oops. And um, we've got... Oh, okay. That's right. So I wanted to dimension this. So let's grab a um, construction line there so that we can dimension the angle off of that. 45 and 40. All right, so the last dimension it appears that I need is the center of this circle. Oh, I see. I actually want to dimension to the outer edge of that. So we'll dimension it this way instead. Oops. Make that reference. And uh, we know that that radius is uh, one inch. So I'll just plug that in there. Come with me. There we go. And then, oh my gosh, let's try this one more time. I'm going to slow down a little bit so that I don't make as many mistakes. I want this midpoint here, so we need to grab two, two construction lines and set them equal. Okay. So this actually could be for reference. I don't need that. I can make these horizontal. Let's grab this outer point here and make those horizontal. So now that's my uh, my reference. So let's try this one more time, 34.925. And the center of that circle is at 34.1313. That is complete. Let's close that sketch. Let's do a cut. And again, just do through all. You could do uh, two first as well. OK. Now that edge is a little sharp, so we're going to put a radius on that. It doesn't need to be a large radius, uh, so we'll just stick with the default of one there. Next, we want to make a hole feature. Uh, to put a, a string through, a strap through, whatever, so that we can hang it on a, ch a keychain or a backpack. So we're going to make another sketch on the top plane. Um, I'm going to use the hole feature, so we don't actually need to dimension this hole. We just need to uh, place it. And I should have changed the placement on that right off the bat. And again, we want a dimension off of this feature here. So let's see if we can bring that in with us. There we go. Now let's see if I can delete some of these unwanted dimensions. And features. OK. 
Okay. So what I did was I used this carbon copy uh, routine and copied the previous pocket, which had all of this geometry in it already. I didn't want to have to recreate that, so this makes it pretty easy. Uh, that's reference. So let's grab these two, make them horizontal, and then the dimension is uh, nine. Sorry, seven point nine three seven five. And again, the whole size doesn't matter. We're going to drive that off of the whole feature. And with the whole feature, we want Okay, I guess I picked a quarter 20 clearance hole. All right. Hide that sketch. We don't need to see that sketch anymore. Okay. We're about halfway through. The next features we want to make is this uh, weight reduction cut out here. And then, of course, the, uh, the serrated feature here. So let's begin with the... Um, weight reduction parts here. Uh, it's going to take a little while to get that done, so bear with me. So let's make another sketch, an XY plane. I'm going to close that. I'm going to change the position to 6.35, and we'll get back into it. Uh, I want to bring this back in so that I have this feature on the bottom. Or on the back end there, delete everything that we don't need, and we'll work off of that. All right, so the the gist of the feature is going to be uh, a constant thickness uh, between, or a constant thickness here and here, and then kind of cutting it out at an angle and following the bend right here. Um, so we're going to use some patterns and some mirror features to get this done. Actually, let's do a... I don't think I can use the rectangle. So we'll just draw that really quick. Those two should be horizontal, and these two should be parallel. Now it looks like I want to... Oop, drop it. Drop a construction line there, and another one up here to control the angle. Um, let's make a construction. Okay. So next, let's grab these end corners, these end points, or let's grab these points here. We'll just call them points for now, and uh, these as well. Come on. There we go. Let's uh, construct some geometry here, like this. And we'll go like that. Uh, since we made this, the um, intersection point of these two lines in that first sketch. Uh, I don't have to make construction lines between those two. Uh, but we may need these anyway. So let's set these equal. And that should constrain it for the most part. Looks like we want to make a dimension on here of 15.875. Alright, that's constrained. So this is going to serve as our mirror axis. So we're going to do two of these features, and then we're going to mirror them about this point here. All right, so this locational dimension is 44.45. I want these angled at 35 degrees. All right. 
right? And we do want this centered, so let's draw a construction line this way. Oops. Make that vertical and uh, connect those two. And then, of course, make these equal. And then we'll dimension this leg here. 3.9624. And then the d distance between these two is a uh, half inch. Okay, sorry. Try that again. Pick the points. 12.7. All right. So let's make these... Uh, Horizontal. Okay. Now, we need to make a copy of this. So we'll grab all of these and if I can remember where that do a rectangular array. There's only two columns and one row. That is correct. And our spacing should be um, 11.43. Click OK. Update that to 11.43. Just leave it for now. Let's uh, let's do it like this. Make those horizontal, and then make these equal. Okay. Then we'll make these parallel. That locks that in place. Now let's grab all of these. And then uh, that's our last selection, which is the uh, mirror plane. And then let's click on mirror. All right. Now when you mirror parts, you lose a lot of your um, constraints. Uh, it looks like it's keeping some constraints here. But uh, we're going to have to redimension a lot of this. No, sorry. Not redimension. We want to add in some symmetric constraints on those. Um, excuse me, those that should work. Maybe if I pick the right, I'll see. I should say zero, and then I'm going to delete it, and then I'm going to make that horizontal. All right. So let's just go through selecting the points and then making them symmetric. All right, looks like we didn't have to do the last one because it kept that equals constraint there. So now what we need to do is make our uh, transitional feature here. Um, and this one we're going to do uh, just freehand. And put an arc between those two. Excellent. Now let's make these parallel. And we'll make these parallel. There we go. And I'm going to need to make this tangent to this line. So let's add construction line here. Grab those two and make them tangent. And I might as well just take this and make those connected. All right. Uh, these can be horizontal to each other. Uh, I believe these should be concentric. Um, they may not be concentric, actually. Yeah, those might not be concentric. So I'll go ahead and, and uh, add that anyway, just to make that tangency easier. Um, now we do want to set that separation which is um you know what i'll do a little trick here let's add that construction line tangent and then we'll set these two lines equal and that'll be perfect okay so now let's make these two symmetric and these two symmetric. 
and we're done. So this is actually easier than the first time I <laughs> did this. Um, it helps to uh, iterate through design sometimes. Um, you tend to learn shortcuts and uh, more efficient ways of doing things. Uh, so m watching more than one video as well will help uh, get you exposed to different scenarios, uh, different modeling techniques, and um, hopefully spark your uh, mind to think of new and creative ways to uh, make geometry that seems difficult. Okay, we'll close that because that's done. We'll cut that through. Say to all. Close that. Now that's looking pretty good. So now that that's done, let's put some uh, radii in these corners. Uh, 1.52 is what I want, so let's add in all those edges. Let's try a little trick here. Where is it? Let's go to a wireframe. And that way we can add in our edges without having to uh, see them directly. Those are definitely the wrong ones. Okay. There we go. Click OK on that. Let's move back to uh, as is. Excellent. Let's add a little chamfer as well. Uh, this chamfer is a half millimeter. Let's go back to our wireframe so that we can add the bottom ones as well. All right. Uh, let's add a, another chamfer on, also 0.5, on the rest of the parts here. Oh, I see. Right, so we're adding all of these in at this point before doing, back to wireframe, before doing the serrated edge, and that was because um, I didn't want to have to pick every little face between the serrations for this chamfer. It's easier to have the chamfer in place and then cut through it. So let's then add in all of our uh, edges here. Shouldn't have to add every single line. It should follow the tangent propagation. Let's see how that looks. Add in one more edge, this edge here. I think this edge does not come with. It doesn't like to add it. Yeah. It's saying I won't make that edge. All right, click OK. Go back to as is. Now let's go ahead and make our serrated pocket. And we only have to make uh, the sketch for one of the pocket, and then we'll do a linear array uh, for the rest. So again, let's make a sketch on the top plane. I'm going to close it and set it to 6.3, oops, 5. Go back into the sketcher. Uh, let's bring that pocket back in. Um, 
And then let's delete what we don't need. And then we'll draw a little triangle. I always forget to use um, polyline. Kind of wish it would be the default. And then you just hit escape to uh, stop using the polyline feature. That's how SolidWorks has it. And <laughs> unfortunately, I'm very used to that method. So it's a little bit hard to, uh, to change those habits. All right, so from the um, point to point there, that dimension is 13.97. Okay, let's try to get back over this way. Uh, this opening is 20.32. I'm sorry, that is 2.32. And then this height is 1.5875. So then the last um, dimension is the angle between those two, and, we, and that's 30 degrees. All right, let's close that. Pocket that through all, of course. Select OK. For these sharp edges, let's, uh, sorry. For these sharp edges, let's fillet those. Uh, we don't need a very large fillet. We just want to break the corner. Come on. So we're only going to grab these two edges like that. All right, now let's grab the pocket and the fillet. And let's create a linear dimension. Sorry, let's create a linear pattern. We do want the x-axis. All right, so one inch total, 25.4. And we want eight occurrences inside of that. That's, that's the final feature. We'll select OK. And then, of course, finally, we want to, uh, where is it? Set refine to true. Get rid of a lot of those. And, um, oh my gosh, I let's go back to this chamfer. And I forgot to add in these edges here. Working kind of slow. Okay, sorry about that. All right, um, and that's it. You've just modeled an EDC pry bar which could uh, be manufactured. Let's go to the linear there. Thanks for watching. I hope this was uh, informative. I hope you uh, learned something new. And um, feel free to use this model as you wish. You know, go ahead, make the parts off of it. That'd be completely fine with me. Um, again, thanks for watching. Please like if you liked the video. Please subscribe if you want more. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.